age. It happens to all of us, bit by bit, every second of every day, silently accumulating so that it can shock us when we least expect it. BAM! Covid's start point is halfway between now and 2015, and everything's relative. You know you're in trouble when a school leaver starts in a workplace and looks about 8 years old, when you look at soldiers and they seem about 13, when MILFs stop looking old, or when you get your ass kicked by somebody in Counter-Strike who was born in 2012. Here's one of those weird time dilation things that's been haunting me lately. Do you remember that series, Going Low in CSGO? In it, Two Clicks Philip would reminisce about the old days of Counter-Strike Source and all the stupid stuff he did back then. You didn't hold that stuff against him though, because that was from a different game from long, long ago. You probably still resent him for deranking in CSGO, even though that too is now a different game from even longer ago than those ancient stories were when that series first came out. If those YouTube videos were children, they'd be onto their adult teeth already. What a weird comparison. Because just like that colonoscopy you'll soon be due, ageing is full of weird analogies. So when Plenar's innocent little reddit post about highest KD ratios at every age came out, you bet everybody jumped straight to their age to validate that they could still be awesome at the game if they really wanted to, and that they're not past it just yet. Or maybe it's just me who does that, I don't know. At first, this video you're watching was just going to steal his work so I could have an easy YouTube video to make for once, but I decided to make it complicated for myself by learning from what he did and by trying to do my own thing on top of it. You see, he got the highest yearly average KD ratios at every age. That's a lot of variables right there, and since he limited his data to just the big events, the sample size is small and the number of maps each player played is limited, so there's a huge amount of deviation even between the best of players. So what can we learn from this list? Not a lot. Some ages, like 24, 25 and DONK, are dominated by a single player, and I found myself asking if there's a better way of doing this, because surely a KD ratio of 1.5 in 2013 is not equal to a 1.5 KD ratio today, and so on. You'll notice that with players like Getright, Forrest and Pasha topping these charts, it could be that them getting in on the action early in the game's lifetime helped them to stand out more. Forrest actually tops the charts twice at two different ages. And it gets even more ridiculous in his follow-up video where he includes data going back even further, which leads to completely ludicrous differences between the very best players. Now, Forrest tops the charts four different times. So while their performances back then look insane, if anything it makes a more recent standout player appear even more impressive, given the much higher standard they now have to stand out from. And yes, their competition includes all those standout players from years past. I mean, you can see all the disclaimers down here. The most intriguing one for me was how player ages could be off by one year, since HLTV lists results by years, while most players selfishly choose not to be born on January the 1st. You might want to take something simple and shocking from this kind of analysis, but the devil is always in the details, and the more you learn about this sort of thing, the less everything seems to mean. So to try and summarise what he discovered in a semi-interesting way, what he's done here shows how the top player of each age fares, and you can see that they fare quite well with excellent performance from the young age of 17 right through to 25, and then their brain quickly deteriorates, and by about the age of 34 their reflexes have got so bad they should probably hand in their driving licence. But it's not exactly fair when the sample size for 35 year olds in this list is one player, compared with literally dozens for 25 year olds. So you'd expect the best 25 year old to be better than the best 35 year old for that reason alone, let alone all the others. This is the average KD of all the top players of every age that he featured, and here it is again, this time excluding the very best player. It smooths all the results out a bit, still shows the same drop off after the age of 25. So yeah, that's Plenar's list, focusing on standout performances at different ages. But maybe there's more that we could investigate here. So I decided to get all the results for one year only, I chose 2022, being the last full year that CSGO was the thing that people used. I limited it to online events because why not? While it doesn't limit all the variables, it does at least limit some, and unlike LAN events, it still gives a huge pool of data in the form of hundreds of maps for hundreds of players. And what I was left with were the stats for 392 players aged between 15 and 35 years old. Some random fun facts from the data, Donk had joint fewest maps played with just 95, and the most was Denny Suave with 303. The average and median age was 22, the average match length was 27 rounds, which I expect would be much lower if we did that with 2024 data, the average KD ratio was 1.03, and in total, almost 1.6 million rounds of Counter-Strike were recorded, which I estimate put together is about 4 entire years worth of footage, which actually isn't as much as I was expecting. But enough of all that pointless shit, let's find out how their age correlates with how good they are. But which metrics should I use? 
There is no perfect way to judge how good these players are. If you're the entry dragger, then you're expected to die quite a lot, so maybe KD ratio isn't the fairest measurement of how good someone is. If you're always on the winning side, then yes, that could be because you're awesome, but then maybe also part of why you're awesome is because you're always on the winning team, or smurfing against worse players. And then there are some people, such as myself, who might only get a handful of kills every game, but each and every one of them was super high impact. Or at least that's what I'm claiming. So rather than use KD ratio, I decided to use the HLTV 2.0 rating to judge these players, since it includes far more variables than just the plain old kill-death ratio. And here were my results. Every single player of every single age, give or take one depending on when they were born, and you can see it's a weird cluster of players. Looks almost like an eye, doesn't it? Subscribe to this channel for more profound analyses, but this isn't just a collection of the best players. This is data from anyone who showed up on HLTV when limiting it to these criteria being online matches played in 2022 that were documented on HLTV. So it will highlight variances within teams. A rubbish team with one half decent player, his stats could look incredible. Likewise, a bottom performer on a top team could look much worse than players in worse teams that they're actually far better than. But you'd hope this sort of stuff would average out over hundreds of players and hundreds of maps played. We're looking for trends here. Yet all I can see is an eye. After the age of 28, Suddenly there's no longer enough people of that age to give us a decent spread, so really we're talking between the ages of 17 and 28 here, with a tail after that. And I went and did some box and whisker diagrams of the same data, but if I'm honest it showed me even less. So if you're skipping through this video just to get the gist of my findings, this right here is probably the simplest way I can demonstrate what I found from the data that I used. I've reduced it down to just an average HLTV 2.0 recording per age, which is shown in blue, and a top performing player for every age, shown in orange. Given the limited data either side, I feel like only this section can be reasonably trusted, and even then I'd only trust the average. And from this, I can conclude that those of you worried your performance will suddenly drop off after you hit 25, you needn't worry, for there is still hope. Even people of the ripe old age of 28 can perform relatively decently if judged by the HLTV 2.0 metric. And then beyond that, it's not like they get rubbish, it's just that there aren't enough players to form a fair judgement about. But maybe that onto itself is judgement enough. People seem to stop playing after they get to a certain age. Is it because their skills are fading with age? Or is it their motivation that goes? Is it the extra baggage they collect along the way that's weighing them down? Maybe they've started a family or have other commitments, like a cat. For me, I know I had to make a decision, probably at around the age of 28. I could continue being a mediocre Counter-Strike player and YouTuber, or I could get good at one of those things by sacrificing the other, and I chose to focus all my efforts on YouTubing, and at that point, playing Counter-Strike took a back seat. I still keep it ticking over, but I think I chose correctly, because before that point I had followed the top teams and I had played several matches a day for several years and all that stuff, and I knew how it felt to go up the ranks and then down them again, and at some point I think you'd regret only doing that with your life. The idea of only being known for that one thing and pinning all that you're known on that thing. You get to a point in your life where that no longer feels like enough anymore, even if you are the best, and especially if you've been the best for a while. Or at least, that's my take on why people change as they get older. And then I think of how these players have grown up. Say you grew up before the era of matchmaking, you'd be lucky to get two matches a week. But now, you can get as many as you like, as frequently as you want to. That's surely got to give younger players an advantage over 30-something year olds, who probably did spend several years of their life stuck in a much less competitive era where you were limited by the skill and the motivation of those directly around you. God, I miss those days. And remember, my results are only using the HLTV 2.0 rating system. It's just one number. It might be the best one number we have with which to judge players by, but it is still only one number. According to Bookshelf Dude here, it takes two to measure your own ass. So how can we hope to reduce something as important and as complicated as a player's skill level down to just one figure? Because behind each of these dots, there's a life story to tell. See this one here? This high-performing 31-year-old is the incredibly named Pone Alone, an American player who has played for all sorts of teams who has probably managed such a high KD ratio from playing mostly against lower-tiered American teams because he didn't do quite so well when he was up against top teams. As for this guy all the way out here, all alone and several years older than anybody else on the list, it's Taz, and this one here was his teammate. Now guess where Zaiwu is? Spoiler alert, he isn't even here. He's not on the list. He's near the top on HLTV for all the other categories, second in HLTV's very own top 20 players for 2022 list. But for whatever reason, he didn't even show up on HLTV's online matches list shown here. And neither did Simple, who was HLTV's number one player of the year for 2022. Nor did player number three, nor four, and so on. So this is where I discovered what was going on. 
This list that HLTV shows here that I've been using for this video isn't every player that fits this criteria that I've requested. And if I limit it to the top 10, then I begin to see the bigger names emerging. And you can see they've only played a handful of maps compared with all the ones that were on my list. So it looks as though if there are too many players to display, then HLTV cuts players off in some way perhaps based on how many maps they've played. So there you go, I've identified a limitation with my collected data, though I'm not quite sure how I'm meant to work around this without ridiculous amounts of data scraping. The players who are on my list do at least have robust amounts of data about their performances, so there is that I suppose. I've covered how HLTV 2.0 works in a video before if you'd like to know more about it, link will be shown up here somewhere right now. In short, it's a bunch of different weighted formulae, generally based around how good you are at shooting people, but it's still no substitute for actual real world knowledge of these players and teams and the matches they partake in. Now I know people hate AI, but one thing it could actually be really good for is in formulating an algorithm that attempts to figure out a formula to match human made lists of top players and the factors that are most important going into that. Perhaps they'll do that for HLTV 3.0. But until then, if you want to know how age affects players' abilities, it's probably best to listen to someone who studies competitive Counter-Strike and who knows the teams and players involved, who has an expert knowledge of all things Counter-Strike, and who isn't edgy and biased. Good luck. Maybe you could even go and ask the players directly about how their lives at 32 are compared with when they were just 22. So yeah, in conclusion, inconclusive. I'm not denying that skill drops off with age, reflexes are proven to deteriorate, but experience is still a must. I'm just saying when the age limit of players is 30 something, the limiting factors are probably a lot more complicated than simply reflexes or age related physical deterioration. There are definitely fewer old players and they seem to shift to in-game leader and coach roles and maybe they do get other life commitments. So if you have any idea of how this sort of testing should be done instead, I'm all ears. <laughs>